Well, listening to that with me was our foreign editor, Armand Georgian, who's with me now. And Armand, as I said, uh, the French president's talking about a range of issues there. What do you think his key point was? Well, I, mean, I think the general sort of um, gist of it was how closely coordinated all the various policies are in these different international fora. So in the EU, in NATO and in the G7, there's coordination between members of all those organizations and between the organizations as well. Uh, so to give you some, of exam some examples, uh, he talked about uh, how the G7 and the EU uh, has been uh, coordinating its response. Uh, and of course, when it comes to military issues, he uh, kind of, I think, implicitly drew links between the NATO response and what he wants to do uh, in EU uh, defence matters, uh, saying that uh, EU defence should not be a substitute for NATO. But uh, he believes that the current crisis has given a new impetus to this idea of EU defence, which should be complementary to NATO. Uh, he also mentioned that he, you know, is continuing to uh, speak personally to President Putin, where he's been insisting on uh, humanitarian access uh, and uh, uh, relief for uh, the civilian population, which, by the way, was the uh, object of a vote in the UN General Assembly with 140 nations voting in favor uh, of aid access and only five opposing uh, that motion. Uh, and also he, he uh, of, of course, has been insisting in these conversations with President Putin on uh, securing Ukraine's nuclear sites as well. That's been one of the main mm -hmm. sort of planks of, of his, his contacts with the Russian president as well. Now, what about this question of Russian energy and Europe's dependence on it? To what extent do you think we got any clues from Macron today that he is interest, interested in trying to wean perhaps France, perhaps all of Europe off uh, Russian gas? Well, he's, he's clearly taking a kind of middle-of-the-road approach. Mm -hmm. He's not on the side of those EU members that want an all-out energy embargo on Russia now. Uh, there are some uh, countries uh, that are physically closer to Russia that have been... Uh, calling for, for that kind of embargo. Uh, France is not one of them. So uh, Macron said today in these remarks just now that uh, that Europe has to do, do two things. It has to diversify its energy resources, but it also has to keep uh, energy prices down, which is really a code for saying no energy embargo on Russia, Nadia, because if there were to be an energy embargo right now, those prices would shoot up. And he's saying, no, we have to keep prices down. Uh, so for him, clearly, it's a longer term quest to diversify to liquefied natural gas, other sources. Uh, that obviously doesn't happen overnight. Um, but I think he, what was quite interesting, he put a lot of emphasis on the food crisis, which he said was going to be very much in evidence in the next 12 to 18 months. Uh, and that is for him also a key uh, incentive to try and prevent this war from escalating even further, because obviously then we would have a catastrophic impact on food prices, including in Africa, which he talked about a lot in these remarks. And of course, uh, France is a country which has a lot of links uh, with African nations. So that is a, an area of my of prime concern for Macron. Armand Georgian, thanks very much indeed.